welcome you all to the Back to Basics Ministries Online Church. Praise God. I see Christian Aaron Carpenter. I see my son Wes up in New Jersey. I see Ryan Trogel in Pennsylvania. My good friend Andy Mack from Connecticut and many, many others. And I want to greet you. I want to give a shout out to all of our friends in different nations. Our friends in Jamaica, Bishop Davis and all of our friends in Jamaica. Our friend Bishop Elijah Wena in Mombasa, Kenya, and a shout out to all of our Back to Basics churches in Kenya and in Tanzania. A shout out to Bill Abraham in Tanzania. We praise God that the ministry is expanding. Praise God for our churches in Africa and the ministries and the school of ministry. And I give a shout out to you. Praise God. Give a shout out to all of you listening to the, the, the audio. Those who cannot come on live with us but will join us. We praise God. We give a shout out to Lenny Clausen who is healing in the in, I, I, he's out of the hospital healing in Pennsylvania. We give a shout out, praise God, to Stacy Baggett in Alabama, outside of Birmingham. Praise God. We give a shout out to all the sick and the afflicted. We praise God. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. Thank God that he woke you up this morning. Glory to God. Thank God I just went upstairs and looked on our uh, kitchen counter and we have zucchini and fresh carrots from the garden praise god praise god that means we're gonna eat today y'all we got zucchini and fresh carrots and we can find some chicken somewhere hallelujah god is good what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve praise god i want to give a shout out to all of my friends all over the world i thank god for this worldwide ministry it's called back to basics ministry and this is the back to basics online church we are in our third year as an online church the online church is different but ladies and gentlemen there is no difference in the church there's one church one lord one faith one baptism ladies and gentlemen the lord jesus christ told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel he said on this rock i'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it there are some of us who pastor in the brick and mortar church you have a building you attend where people come to worship god hallelujah praise god for the brick and mortar church and then there are some of us who who uh, have online churches we sit at our computers in our studios and i thank god for this beautiful studio we we uh, worship god from our studios and we preach the word of god as though we are right there with you looking at you eyeball to eyeball because you are important so whether you attend the brick and mortar church or whether you attend the online church you are important to God and if you don't have a church where you attend praise God let this online church be the place you attend until God appoints you to where he wants you to be ladies and gentlemen the worst thing you can do is sit at home and feel sorry for yourself or sit at home and grumble and complain or sit at home and think that nobody cares about you we care the the back to basics online church cares we care about you you are precious to us and precious to god you have been fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of god according to psalm 139 verse 14 and so you matter to god and you matter to us there's no respect of persons with god and we should not show any respect of persons we are to love one another when things are not going right in this person's life we're to love them if that person makes a mistake they commit a sin we're still to love them love them back up 
to where they belong. Praise God. We're going to be talking about the gift of faith today, the gift of faith. And there's a character in the Bible, a personality named Samson. Samson made a big mistake. He committed sin with Delilah. He gave up all of the tapes. He gave up all of his secrets, his secrets to strength and, and, and prosperity and success with God. He sinned and gave up all that, but yet before he died, he called upon the name of the Lord. He repented, and God replaced the anointing in his life. Ladies and gentlemen, God restored him, and, and Samson was able to destroy the Philistines. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what turn your life has taken, some of you may have quit on God. Some of you may have backslidden. Some of you may have said, I'm tired of the church. Some of you may have become frustrated with the church. Some of you may become frustrated frustrated with the online church but do not sin ladies and gentlemen and if you sin remember what first john 1 and 9 says we have an advocate with god christ jesus the holy one so if you sin if you stumble if you fall i believe i'm talking to somebody today if you stumble you fall you make a mistake you commit a sin don't quit don't quit on God. Don't quit on God. Call upon the name of the Lord. Be quick to repent. Be quick to repent and ask God to restore you. David said, he restoreth my soul. And David knew what he was talking about. David committed adultery and had the woman's husband killed on the battlefield. Ladies and gentlemen, he committed a terrible sin. And yet, when the prophet Nathan came to David and David was exposed, the Holy Spirit used the prophet Nathan to expose David. David's eyes were open. His heart was rent. And he prayed and he repented. And Psalm 51 came out of his lips and out of his pen. And he said, uh, against thee and thee only, O oh God, have I sinned. He said, Restore me, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. And David, even after committing adultery and being a partner to murder, David was restored by the Lord. And so I'm reaching out to those of you in prison or those of you who who, who have committed crimes, those of you who who sinned against God, don't quit. Call on the name of the Lord and be saved and be restored. If you're in a backslidden condition, call it unto the Lord and be restored. God wants to restore you. That's what this ministry is all about. We're reaching out where people do not attend the brick and mortar church. We're reaching out where they feel ashamed to walk inside of a church. We're reaching out where people have given up on church folks, where people have given up on pastors, where they've become frustrated with the, but the money grabbing and, and the things that are making, giving the church a black eye. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, call upon the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever is going on in your life, call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus is waiting to hear your cry. He told Jeremiah in, in uh, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me. I will answer thee. I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. So you don't have to sit there and 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 and, and gloat and 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 punish yourself and 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 you don't have to sit there and take the things people are saying about you. No, no, no. Humble yourself before the Lord. The scripture says, humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God and he will raise you up. The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The Bible says, I've never seen any man made ashamed 
who call upon the name of the Lord. I just feel like preaching to somebody today. I just feel like uh, telling you how good God is. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Now if angels bow before him, ladies and gentlemen, why don't you bow before God? Why don't you stop being angry? Stop being bitter. Stop punishing yourself. Stop letting people punish you. Get up from where you are and worship the Lord. I say get up where you, from where you are and worship the Lord. Stop feeling sorry because you're sick and your body refuses to get healed. God is still a healer, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you give up on God. He said in his word, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. The Bible says, with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Lord today. I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the presence of the Lord where you are. Hallelujah. So glad, so glad you didn't have to get in your car and drive 30 miles to go to a church building. You can reach God right where you are. God is right where you are. The scripture says wherever two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of us. And so we gather, you and I, we gather. Hey, Wes, my son in New Jersey, we gather you and I together in the name of Jesus. And the Lord is in our midst, just as though if we were in a cathedral, in, in a great uh, tabernacle where two or more are, are gathered in the name of Jesus. Andy Mack, you and I are gathered in the name of Jesus, and so the Lord is in the midst of us. God is not mad or angry with anybody. He loves you, and he wants you to open your heart today to receive him, to receive him. Some of you might get saved today. This may be the day that you're going to get saved. Let this be the day that you get saved. Let this be the day where you say, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. I want to give a shout out to my friend Lynn Henderson in Columbia, Maryland. He received the Lord last week. I want to give a shout out uh, to all the people who have asked Jesus to come into their life today. I want to give a shout out to those of you who are renewing your trust in the Lord. You're renewing your dedication to the Lord. Why don't you just take time out right now and say, Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you. Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. Lord Jesus, be my Savior and my Lord. You may have prayed that prayer 10 years ago. You may have prayed that prayer a year ago, uh, but you're backslidden or you uh, got out of touch with Jesus. But God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. You are important to God. And so rededicate your life to the Lord today. Get the power of the Lord on your life. Get the anointing. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing right where you and I are. I feel the anointing. What is the anointing? It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit. I believe he's here. He's here to heal. He's here to deliver. He's here to save. He's here to set free. I want to give a shout out to my friend Steve Pipitone. Steve, we're praying for you and the loss of your son. And we pray that God will restore you. God is the healer. We want to give a shout out to Sidney Brown, who buried his wife yesterday. Sidney, the Lord has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten you. I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to the Franklin family, who lost their, their brother James uh, today. God is the healer. God is the restorer. Death will come to all of us. But, but if you put your trust in the Lord while there is time, while you're still alive, put your trust in the Lord. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior and your Lord. And when the day comes, when death knocks at your door... And he's going to knock at all of our doors. We will just transition, ladies and gentlemen. We will transition. We'll do like Enoch did. We'll do like Elijah did. We'll just transition and go from life 
uh, into new life with Jesus Christ because he's promised us eternal life, eternal life. So the songwriter said, I got a home up in that kingdom. Ain't that good news? Ain't that good news? You ought to tell somebody in your house. You ought to tell somebody on your job. You ought to tell somebody while you're on vacation. Hey, Wes, enjoy your vacation. But tell somebody, I've got a home up in that kingdom. Ain't that good news? Ain't that good news? And don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let him steal your crown. Don't let the devil to get you to not believe the word of God. Don't let the devil tempt you to lust or to sin or to commit adultery or commit fornication. Don't let the devil uh, tempt you to drink or smoke reefer or smoke ganji. Don't let the devil tempt you to steal money or to rob, kill or steal. You tell the devil, no, no, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I've decided to follow Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, take a stand, take a stand. America, take a stand. England, take a stand. Canada, take a stand. Praise God, we give a shout out to Sandra Lee, Linda Spader, all of our friends up in Canada, take a stand. We give a shout out to our friends in Paris, France. John and Emily Hughes, take a stand. We give a shout out to our friend Memo in uh, Belgium. We give a shout out to our friends in Europe, in Africa, South America. We give a shout out to our friend Sandra Hendricks in Guyana, take a stand. Thank you, Father, for this global ministry. We give a shout out to Pastor Boycott Edmonds in Kenya. We give a shout out to all of our friends. Take a stand. Praise God. We give a shout out to Pastor Ecuton in uh, Western Kenya. Praise God. Continue to build the church. Continue to build the church. Elijah, continue to build the church so that men and women will have a place where they can meet together and learn about Jesus. You're about a great work. Stay on the wall stay on the wall Ryan Trogler stay on the wall don't let anybody steal your crown praise God Tammy Nichols stay on the wall Christy Carpenter stay on the wall don't let the devil steal your joy don't let him steal your testimony well praise God welcome once again to the back to basics online church praise God when you come on uh, a few minutes early, you hear the, some of the songs we pray. The songs are, are played to encourage you, to get you into the right temperament, the right mind. Let this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. And when you listen, whether you're listening by uh, a cell phone or, 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 or landline phone or whether you have a computer hookup, just sanctify yourself unto the Lord and dedicate this time to the Lord God. Whether you're sitting up in a pew uh, or with a, a pastor and congregation and a choir singing or whether you're just by yourself with your cell phone, praise God, the Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is nigh. Hallelujah. He will heal you right where you are. Praise God. He will bless you right where you are. God is looking for someone to trust him. Trust him. Just trust him at his word. Don't look at your circumstances. Trust in the Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. You may say, but pastor, I've got this mountain of financial bills. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. All Jesus has to do, ladies and gentlemen, is speak one word, and that mountain of bills will disappear, and God can re uh, restore your fin finances. God can bless you abundantly. You just wait on the Lord. You may say, but the doctor is saying, my health is not good. I've got end stage, end stage this or end stage that. My kidneys have failed. My liver has failed. I've got cancer, but there's nothing too great for God. He is a miracle working God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have sent out prayer cloths this week. Upon request, we've sent out prayer cloths this week. There are people who have believed that if we would send them a prayer cloth based on what God did through Paul in 
Acts chapter 19, verses 11, 12, we've had people requesting prayer cloth. Send me a prayer cloth or send a prayer cloth to so-and-so, and I believe that God will heal them through the prayer cloth. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not healing through me or anyone else. He's healing by the Holy Spirit. And if he used, if God used a prayer cloth, a handkerchief that they took from the body of Paul and laid on the sick and God healed them, God can do the same with you and me. Praise God. Praise God. We're talking about a God who's real, who will use a handkerchief as a point of contact uh, so that you can have a point of contact with him by the Holy Spirit. Our trust is in God. Hallelujah. So whether you read the word of God and say, I believe it, or you hear the word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, or whether you receive a prayer blanket or a prayer cloth in the, in the mail and you follow the instructions and you touch it to your body with your faith in God, studying the word.
Okay, now you can hear me. I, my button had gone off. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Verse 4, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. You may say, well, I have a college degree. I've got a PhD degree. I've, uh, uh, I've got a law degree. What do I need this for? Ladies and gentlemen, your college degree can't stand in the presence of the Holy Ghost. All of my degrees don't mean a thing. In fact, the same writer of this uh, letter to the Corinthians, Paul, said all of his righteousness is as done. All of his degrees, all of the schooling, all of the things he's accomplished, they amount to a pile of of dung dog do okay bird poo he said all the things I've accomplished don't mean a thing it's Christ Jesus it's the Holy Spirit it's what God has blessed me with and ladies and gentlemen uh, a true believer walks by faith in God and God's ability and so this the scripture in, in 1st Corinthians 12 talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit enabling gifts that he wants to give to us to do the work of Christ. And so if we're going to do the work of Christ, we can't do it based on our master's degree or our doctorate degree or even our associate degrees or our bachelor's degrees. We must be baptized in the Holy Ghost and filled with the Spirit of God and, and allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. And then the Spirit gives the gifts that he wants us to have. Today we're talking about the gift of faith. The gift of faith is often accompanied, accompanied by great works. We see the gift of faith operating where people are facing insurmountable odds. It looks like the, the gates closed on them, the floodwaters are coming upon them, the fire is about to consume them, but they exercise a faith that is not man-made, not man-given. You can't purchase it in Walmart. You can't get it at Sears. You can't get it at Amazon.com. It comes only from God, ladies and gentlemen. And God wants to give you that gift of faith that no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, uh, 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 no matter what the doctor says you have wrong with you, you have the trust that God is going to work it out. Praise God. And you don't quit. You don't give up. That's the gift of faith. I have faith that God is going to do this. Even though uh, my situation has been diagnosed as end stage, last stage, I have the faith that God is going to do this. I have the faith that I'm going to apply this anointed handkerchief to my body and God is going to heal me that's the gift of faith ladies and gentlemen praise God that's the gift of faith ladies and gentlemen Samson sinned and the whole world was laughing at him the strongest man in the world he's blinded his eyes were put out and and he's made a mockery and they would bring him out and he was in chains and they'd bring him out tease him throw stuff at him and call him everything and 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 his enemies the Philistines were making him look like a circus animal 
Samson repented of his sins. He told God, God, I am sorry that I sinned against you. God, restore my strength. Restore my strength. He did not ask God to restore his eyesight. He said, God, restore my strength. God, restore me to you. Restore me to you. Renew a right relationship with you with you restore the covenant with me god ladies and gentlemen no matter what you're doing in life no matter what you've experienced when you repent say god i am sorry forgive me father restore me god to a right relationship with you ladies and gentlemen that's when things start popping in your life when samson prayed that prayer ladies and gentlemen strength came back on him the holy ghost came back on him in the name of jesus and he told that that servant who was leading him around that slave boy he told him lead me so I can lean against two pillars. And he grabbed those pillars. Strength was renewed in his body. I can feel him getting strength in his body as he gripped those two pillars and pulled them together and crushed that entire building. All of his enemies were destroyed. The leaders of the Philistines in that one collapse of the building. Ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at Samson, a man who had sinned against God, yet God restored him when he repented. Let's look at David, ladies and gentlemen. David had committed adultery. David had uh, caused a man's wife to be put, a man's, a man, uh, a man to be put to death. He took the man's wife, put the man to death. But when David repented, oh God, forgive me. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Uh, restore to me a right relationship. God restored David and used David mightily. God even said, ladies and gentlemen, check this out. David is a man after my own heart. We're talking about the gift of faith. David went up against Goliath earlier uh, and, and with a slingshot and five stones, went up against a big giant, 13 feet tall, and David cut him down with one stone. Ladies and gentlemen, you can slay the giants in your life. Christy Carpenter, you can slay the giants in your life. Wes, you can slay the giants in your life. Elijah, you can slay the giants in your life. Well, no matter what comes against you, whether it's sickness, whether it's disease, whether it's poverty, whether it's loss of a loved one, whether it's loss of your job, don't quit on God. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. And when you know people who are going through, you can tell them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Christians. We've been born again by the Spirit of God. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. God's got power for you, ladies and gentlemen. He's got an anointing for you. Call upon Him. Ask Him. Ask Him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to give you the gifts of the Spirit. And trust the Holy Spirit to give you what you need. Praise God. Praise God. Hebrews 11, and we're close with this, gives us a roll call of people who walk by faith. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says they subdued kingdoms. They brought down kingdoms kingdoms praise god they brought down kingdoms by their faith and trust in god amen they didn't have not have to go out and kill folks they did not have to get on facebook and hate on people they did not have to get on instagram they did not have to uh, uh show their colors ladies and gentlemen they did not have to get out and demonstrate ladies and gentlemen they put their trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. And I say to you in this nation and in the nation, stop hating one another. Stop uh, dividing the church. Stop uh, grossing out one another. Put your trust in the Lord. The Bible says faith works by love. Faith works by love. Faith and love are partners, ladies and gentlemen. Walk in love. If they hate you, love them back. If they hate you, love them back. Love covers a multitude of sins, ladies and gentlemen. If they dish you, if they kick you to the curb, if they dishonor you, if they offend you, forgive them. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to forgive. And when you sin, repent 
confess your sins and repent. We're talking about the gift of faith. The scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the gift of faith, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says God gives to every person, person a measure of faith. Hallelujah. Well, our time is about up. Our time is about up. The scripture says uh, we don't have time to talk about Barak. We don't have time to talk about uh, Gideon. We don't have time to talk about Jephthah. We don't have time to talk about all these uh, heroes of faith who subdued kingdoms. Some were stuffed into trees, hollowed out trees, and, and, and sawed in half. They were burned by fire. They were fed to the lions. They were fed to the wild animals. These and, and these all trusted in God and still did not get the promises. They believed God because God is holding the promises until all can receive. Praise God, Lord God. What promise are we talking about? Jesus Christ, he is coming back again soon, ladies and gentlemen. Soon and very soon. Do what God has called you to do. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. If Satan knocks you down, you get back up. I say, husband, if Satan knocks you down and, 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 and ruins your marriage, you get back up and be married to Jesus. If uh, wife, if Satan knocks you down and your husband is running with someone else, you get back up and worship God. Get back in the prayer room. Get back. Back in the prayer room, ladies and gentlemen, kingdoms are destroyed in the prayer room. Kingdoms are destroyed in the prayer room. Before we sent out these anointed prayer cloths, praise God, we went to the prayer room and we prayed and obeyed God. The Holy Spirit said, anoint these and send them to the people who requested. So the, 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 the power of God depends on the Holy Spirit, not on me. Faith requires obedience. Faith requires love. Obey the Lord. Do what he says do. The scripture says, for we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power is of God and not of ourselves. And give God the praise. Give God the glory. Give God the honor. And when people thank you and they give you accolades and, and they want to tell you what a great person you are, you lay all those accolades at the feet of Jesus and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is because of you, Lord Jesus, that I'm able to do this. The scripture says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Thank you, Father, for Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and with your stripes we are already healed. So we praise God. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, you keep on walking by faith and trusting in the Lord. And if you're not saved and you're listening to this wherever you are in the world, you're listening to this message, ask Jesus Christ today to come into your life and receive him by faith, and you shall be saved. And if you want to get in touch with me, there are many ways. Email LeroyCarter69 at Yahoo.com or my phone, 404-205-1101, or hit me up on Twitter at BTBMIN or Facebook and we will help you and encourage you with a word with encouraging messages some scriptures and prayer God bless you we're gonna end the recording